Previously on The Bill. I'm oh, not Danny. I ain't gonna help you, mate. I don't know what to arrest you for first. Theft, supplying drugs, pimping, or maybe go straight in with a murder. You don't even think about I'm it. I'm gonna teach you a lesson. Danny, please! <laughs> Danny! Get it out! Alright, alright. Get out, please. Stay there, I'm gonna pull it out. Are you ready? Yeah. You can apply pressure. Take it out, please. Ow! <laughs> All units from Sierra Oscar 7. Go on, I've got a murder suspect decamp from Askill House on Jinton Street. Oh, oh, I see one male wearing black jeans and a black jacket. Sierra Oscar, I need an ambulance ASAP. I've got a police officer injected with drugs over. I couldn't go do what you did. What? I couldn't do what you did. I'm not brave enough. I don't know what you mean. I couldn't do what you did. Shoot. Sure. Let's do it. It's Sacked He's been injected in the neck. It's only Danny Peters. There's only one unprotected exit from this place, as far as I know, and I've got that covered. Mm. Come on. Help me get it off. Any sign of him? That's funny. There he is. Steer us from 7 out of 5. Saturday, still on the premises. Ask your hat. Chitlin Street. Over. 7 out of 5 from Sierra Oscar. All received. Stock another unit some way. Where is tail, Tony? <laughs> Are you sure you'll be all right? Yeah, go. I'll get this guy. So we injected him with heroin. I presume so, I don't know. Uh, enough room to ID, because this is not looking... Look, good. I don't know. Well, I need to flush out this room. Come on, Sarge. So Peter's is agent ID positive, right? Yeah. Need to keep him propped up there. Sarge. Let's lay him down, get him in the recovery position. Okay. Come on, Steve, grab the other arm. Come on, Sarge. Steady, steady, steady. So, sure. He's going, he's going. Sierra Oscar from Sierra Oscar 7. I need an ETA on the ambulance now. We're losing him here. Sierra Oscar so, 7 from Sierra Oscar. I can't find a pulse. Stuart! There he is. Tony, you wait here in case he doubles back. Oi, stop, police! Oi! 795 from 13. I'm outside Askew House now. Can you see the suspect? It's Bertie from 795. Suspect entered underground car park. Over. Keep your hands away from your body and breathe normally. Danny Peters, I'm arresting you on suspicion of murder of Abigail Ferguson and GBH with intent. You don't have to say anything, but it may on be defensive. You failed to mention when questioned something which you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given an evidence. Cuff him. That's no need for all these officers. I reckon he fancied it myself. What are you saying? Oh, your boss. Oh, I reckon he's dying for a hit. I do, maybe I did give him a bit too much for the first time. Ah, is he still with us? He's fine, mate. I like you. Yeah, well, he might be fine for a bit. Danny, do us all a favour. Keep your mouth shut, yeah? That needle that I used, it was dirty. He was conscious and landing, and then he just passed out. Okay, love. We'll take a look then. Open your eyes. Do you need to get his objects out? Keep your gear away. Me? No, no, fine. My eyes open. We've administered some narcosone, but it doesn't seem to be having any effect. You're going to have to get him to St. Hughes. Open your eyes if you can hear me. Have you steady? Oh, you stay with him, and I'll, I'll make sure everything's still Yeah, sure. Yeah. What's his breathing like? Danny Peters is saying that the needle he used on Stuart was dirty. Okay, I am. Um, has anyone called the TCI? <laughs> Roger said he called if there was any news. Do we know why Peters did it? Well, he was cornered. The only weapon he had was a syringe and the fact that he was HIV positive. Stuart's injury is about as high risk as you can get. If what Danny says is true and, and, and he used the syringe before he used it on Stuart, then yeah. You think he's lying? Don't know. Well, we won't know, will we, till Stuart gets his test results back in a few months' time? Yes, if he's all right. Right, I'll get Joan Grace in to interview Peters. If you can get on with your witness statement and make it pithy. I could just tell by Danny's face he was going to do something desperate. I should have anticipated it. Well, we all think that in hindsight. 
Well, we're making progress with the forensics that were recovered from the house where Abby's body was dumped and the murder site. And Tessa's going to come in tomorrow to make an official statement. So Danny's stuffed? I want to get down to the hospital. Well, could you tell Stuart that, please? And he's all the good news he can get at the moment. Yeah. He's conscious. He's uh, still pretty weak, according to the doctors, but he should be okay to go home in the morning. They started giving him the antiviral drugs. God, do you really think this is the best time to break the news? There's never a good time, is it? So, how are you feeling? Yeah, uh, all right, God. Well, I don't know what happened. One minute I'm about to cuff this bloke, and the next minute... I don't know, I don't know where I am. Well, it's not looking good for Peters. Evidence is stacking up in the Abbey murder case. Oh, that's good. That's good. I know you can do it for this as well. <laughs> this isn't easy. Peters is saying that he used the needle that he stabbed you with. Yeah. Not like that hadn't crossed my mind already. This is the drugs hit. I was thinking about my mother dying. Oh, I'm sorry. I was 17 and, um... It was a very slow death. Cancer. And I remember thinking at the time, I don't want this to happen to me. I just want to go quick. I don't care how, I'll just make it quick. And then just before I lost consciousness, I thought this is what you asked for, Stuart. Well, thank God you pulled through. God, no, I'm not being clear. I've got three months now of waiting for these test results to come through. And then I might have years of Hep B and Hep C and HIV. Maybe it would have been better if I'd just gone with that a shot of heroin. recover from a massive heroin overdose then he finds out he may have contracted hiv how bad can it get how long is he on leave for well, as long as he needs we should lock peters up and throw away the key he's looking at a mandatory life sentence at least has he been interviewed yet no he was too far off his face last night no, he seemed right when i was dealing with him well, he's probably waiting for his brief is it him who's representing him he's one of the duty solicitors isn't he have you ever dealt with him his name's Graham Boyd, and he fancies himself like you wouldn't believe. He's one of the new boys, is he? All front and nothing to back it up. No, he's really good. Yeah, he's not a miracle worker. Sorry if we've taken a bit longer than anticipated. There was more to discuss than I thought. Obviously. You take as much time as you like. Well, we have. Thanks. So before we start the interview, I'd like to discuss something with you. Thank you for the disclosure documents. Now, I've spoken with my client, and hypothetically speaking, I'd like to point out that if a lesser charge of unlawful wounding rather than GBH with intent were put forward, my client might be minded to plead guilty. You are aware that our colleague, DC Moss, witnessed the assault? Mm-hmm. You injected D.S. Turner with the intention of inflicting as much damage as possible. Uh, uh, now, should he provide information about drugs and drug dealers, he would ask for a judge's letter proving his cooperation in this case and the fact that he disclosed information that proved helpful. Oh, he wants to give up his dealer. Well, thanks, but we've already got him for murder. Well, that's for a jury to decide. In the meantime, why not listen to what my client has to offer? Well, it's big. A heroin import business. Now, the drugs are branded High Trip. A load of it was recovered in Reading a week ago, and my stash should match it. Maybe you'd like to discuss it with your seniors? I think it could work in both our favours. Danny and his brief both know that he's going down for murder and countless other charges for which they have absolutely no defence. To me, it just smacks of desperation. Graham Boyd knows how to work the system. I mean, he wouldn't bother dangling something like this if he didn't think it would pay off. Well, they know judge's letter would take four or five years off a mandatory life sentence. Give Danny super grass status when he's inside. Is any of this drugs information checking out? Yeah, we've had a fax from South Reading Police. 
They recovered 15 kilos of heroin stamped with a high trip logo on a train to Newport. No suspects were detained, no one was arrested. Danny Stash had the high trip logo on it. We only found one wrap on him. Could have bought that down the pub for a wino, couldn't he? Well, why would he bother wasting our time? He knows we'd find out pretty quickly if he was bluffing. He said he knows people on the import side of the business. He implied. Let's get some proper leads from him. And what do we do about the GBH bargain? Well, you tell him we need concrete information before we can go to the CPS. Go. Sarge? Hey. What are you doing here? Well, I work here, Stevie, in case you hadn't noticed. <laughs> Gov, so, how's it going with Danny Peters? Have you charged him yet? What? Stuart, can I have a word? Occupational health told you to take some leave. Advised. Oh, come on, Stuart. Oh, I'm OK, Gov. It's the medication. They got me on this um, combined treatment and uh, side effects are completely manageable. So what's the deal with um, Danny Pieces? We're still gathering evidence. He's offered us a potential lead on a drugs operation. Ah, oh, the goodness of his heart. He wants a letter to the judge and the GBH charge reducing to unlawful wounding. Of course, we want something substantial in return. CPS are looking into it. And if this doesn't lead to a straightforward cut, look, I know this is the last thing in the world you want to hear right now, but I think this is the last place you should be right now. Fine. Well, you're the boss. If you don't want me here, then I'll go. Look, I'm thinking of your welfare, Stuart. Gov, you really think me sitting at home contemplating all this is going to do me any good? Is that what you'd want if you were in my shoes? I mean, Gov, I, I, I just need to keep things normal. I just I need to stay busy. Yeah, all right. But stay away from Danny Peters. Gov. I told you I was as good as my word. So far, you've given us information that we could have found in a local paper. Well, what's happening about the GBH charge? We're looking for something more concrete to present to the CPS. The ball's in Danny's court. It needs to give us a proper lead before we can move forward. Okay, well, my client's prepared to give you a name. Someone involved in the drugs room. Go on, then. Nico Larton. And who's that? Well, like my brief said, he's a big part of it. What part? You wanted concrete information, he's just given you it. How far have we got with the CPS? Well, let's not jump the gun here. We'll check out this Nico Lawton, then we'll get back to you. Oh, I think it's clocked us. See our awesome 361. Nico's on to us. Over. Peter's story is checking out. Who are you getting this stuff from? Help us to help you, Nico. We've got officers searching your flat, even as we speak. You won't find anything. <laughs> We're not going to take your word for it. And we'll keep on digging until we get somewhere. Even if that means going through every contact on your mobile phone and keeping tabs on you for the next year or so. Now give us your supplier's name and things will be a lot better for you. It's a bloke called Danny Peters. You sure about that? Yeah. Did you know who's supplying Danny? No. Don't know details. And does he know the people who are bringing it over? Yeah. Supplies have been running low for a while. I've been hassling him. He reckons there's going to be a delivery this week. And is Danny reliable? If he says there's going to be a delivery, will it happen when he says it will? Yeah. So why would Danny Peters offer up one of his foot soldiers and mark himself out as a supplier? He's just added yet another charge to his sheet. It shows that he's serious. We finished the search of Nico Lawton's flat. Any joy? Yeah, we found ten racks of heroin. It's hardly the jackpot, is it? Well, he proves his point. The higher up the chain he is, the more he can give us. Now, this batch of uh, high trip that we discovered last week and the heroin that was found on Peters doesn't match anything that we've found in the UK so far. 
as packaging wise and forensic wise. Now, we've recovered 15 kilos. So if there's any more out there, we need to pursue it. What do you want us to do, Gov? I want you to get back to Peters and tell him we want more. His brief's already made it clear that it won't go any further without the GBH charge being reduced. I'll get things rolling with the CPS. You crack on with Peters. Have you spoke to Stuart about that? Don't you worry about Stuart. So have we got this letter then? Nico Lawton couldn't give us very much, Danny. But you found the stuff on him, though. So you've got your proof? Hardly. Well, Danny's not going to offer you someone who'd be able to supply you with all the information you need when we had no guarantee you'd fulfil your side of the bargain. My client's shown you he's willing to cooperate. Are we on? This better be good, Danny. Uh, her name's Paula Grant. And how do you know her? She used to be one of my girls. Oh, so you're telling us that one of your old Toms is now a mover and a shaker in the drugs world. She brings the stuff into the country. Are you sure? Well, I don't know exactly what part she plays in it, but she's earning money. Proper money. What sort of quantities? Serious amounts. 50 kilos, something like that. So, Nico Lawton's effectively a dead end, but they're still going after Danny Peters. I think so. I don't know. Oh, I do know that you shouldn't be anywhere near him. No, I'm looking for the DCI, sir. Shoot. Even if this woman who Peters is talking about is only one up from him, she could still lead us further into the operation. We are talking about a prostitute who used to pin pal. It's a bit of a long shot, don't you think? Hey. What's happening? Danny's given us another name, Paula Grant, an ex-Tom of his. She's got form for possession, prostitution, petty theft. Nothing to suggest she's a major narcotic supplier. I don't know. To me, it just doesn't sound that promising. Can you get DC Walker to check her out? Just background surveillance for her. Gov, Gov, with respect, he's going to keep chucking names at us till next year. He's getting off on it. There's nothing random about Nico. Fine, then let's give Nico another crack. Maybe he'll give us something and then we're not completely compromising ourselves. Well, nothing's been compromised here. We've got enough evidence to put Peters away for 20 years. He's not going to get away with the murder of Abby Ferguson. But this is about following leads on a drugs investigation. Now, your problem is you just don't want us to use him, do you? No, my problem is he's a killer. Gov, he wants to see the FME. He's suffering withdrawal symptoms. How are you doing, mate? Come on, keep moving. You had a sound night's sleep, didn't you? Oh, are you enjoying this, are you, Danny? Stuart! It's going to be short-lived! This is all too close to you. No, Gov. The reason I'm angry has got absolutely nothing to do with what happened to me, OK? I know what Danny Peters is like. He uses people. He manipulates them. And I think us using him as an informant is a complete waste of our time. Well, that's rubbish, Stuart. In any other circumstance, you'd accept this as a routine decision. Look, I've seen what he's capable of. He murdered Abigail Ferguson. He forcibly injected her with heroin. Yeah, and he's going to go to jail for a long time. Not long enough now! Maybe he's done this before. Yeah. Yeah, so why are we out checking the MISPA files? Why are we looking for other innocent young girls? Gov, are you listening to me? He's going down. Yeah, with a reduced sentence. OK, so he gets two or three years off. But it's worth it if it means bringing down key players in a drug syndicate. Well, I think it is. And it's my call. Gov, I, I can see that this deal that Danny Peters is offering us is very tempting. And, uh, and I hope it comes off. I really do. I'm just... I'm just very sceptical about it. We're all sceptical. That's what being a copper is. Let's wait for Kezia, see what she's got to say about this Paula Grant. Kezia Stewart, what's new at Paula's? Gov, she's come out of a flat with some bloke. He could be a punter, but they look very chummy. OK, stay in position. Yeah, sure. Sierra Oscar from DC Walker, I need a car circulated, a silver 4x4, index, Lima, Victor, 54, Whiskey, Sierra, Juliet. If seen, do not stop. Report whereabouts to me. That's the same registration number. Yep. Hi, Kezia, it's Emma. We've spotted that vehicle you've been circulating. It's just drawn up outside the shops in Bagley Avenue. Yeah, OK. We'll stay on her. Gov, facial imaging didn't come up with anything on our angry woman or the girl living in Paula's flat. Do you think he's a punter? Possibly, but if she's still working as a Tom, then she's moved up in the world if a closer appears to go by. 
Uh, we ran a check on the Bagley Avenue address. The business is registered as Markham's Employment Agency, and the owner is Elena Yashina. She's the owner of the car. Yeah, and get this, Paula Grant's flat is owned by Markham's Employment Agency. Elena Yashina is Paula's landlady. Do we know the nationality of this woman? Polish? Russian? Why? I just wondered whether that's where the drugs were coming in from. Oh, come on. She could just be the angry wife of some punter. You said that Danny gets his drugs direct from Paula? Yeah. I think it's time you and I had a proper chat with him. Yeah, yeah Daniel like that. So he likes to be in control, and if you can make him think that he's doing you a favour, then you'll get more from him. It's not looking promising, Danny. We trailed Paula, and she doesn't appear to be more connected than any other working girl. You're wrong. My client's shown you he's serious about this. I'm not saying you're lying, we just need more proof. Does Paula know all the girls who work for you? Answer if you can, Danny. Some of them. Not all of them. Hmm. Right, I want you to do me a favour. I want you to call Paula and tell her that one of your girls wants to buy a serious amount of drugs. Well, she won't really have much until tomorrow. How do you know? Good result for them is a good result for us. <sighs> she told me that the next delivery is due today, ready for distribution tomorrow. Are you sure? Hmm. Call Paula, tell her you got a new girl coming around to make a collection. Her name is Stevie. Danny operates in, I don't know how dangerous he is. Yeah, so does Stevie. I'm not having you there messing things up. Oh, come on, I can be her handler. And we're both across this case. I understand how Danny operates. I'm the perfect person to work it with her. Okay, please, if we're going to use Danny, I want to make sure that we get a result. Okay, please trust me. All right, well, you play a ball. Otherwise, you're out. Understood? Go. Okay, Stevie. You meet Paula outside a flat and you do the deal there. The important thing is to establish that they're the same drugs. And then I arrange to pick up some more toys. Yeah. Now, when you get there, Sergeant Stone's going to follow you on foot, and Stuart is now going to be in the car. You sense anything odd, you get out of there. You sure this is safe? Well, Danny's given me enough to convince Paula that I work for him. So. Yeah. The fact that we're relying on Danny's information that worries me. OK, you stay as close as you can to her. Are you sure he's up to this? He wouldn't volunteer otherwise, would he? Yeah, I can see her now. I'm Stevie. Danny sent me. Have you, uh, got the stuff? No, how are you? It won't take long. Come on. Stone. I've got to get the, uh, stuff back to Danny. Yeah, this is just a little freebie. It's just it'll, it'll go mental if I don't get it back soon as. Danny's got to learn some patience. You said you wanted to ask me something? You're staying at Danny's place? You seen Abby recently? No. Oh. Yeah. Daisy Cash, she's not even answering her phone. Why has she gone inside? That wasn't part of the plan, Sloan. Give her some credit, she knows what she's doing. That's the woman the Paula was with earlier. Well, you go in now, you can only make matters worse. Yeah. I don't know who the bloke with her is either. Yeah, it could be a punter. Yeah. Yeah, or it could be muscle. We've got a wall to Right, um, my veins are all shot. Oh, just use the loom. It's out there on the left. Right, thanks. Who's this, Paula? Oh, uh, it's, uh, well, one of Danny's girls, Stevie. I said I'd get someone else for you. Oh, that'll be that'll be one of my guys. So I'd better. Back off, Stuart. No, I mean it. Listen, if you come in here now, you will blow everything. Oh, 
does not like surprises. You still can't find Abby? Steve is reliable. He did a good job for you. Is this true? You are reliable? For the right price? Okay. We'll go ahead. I want you both straight by tonight. Carl doesn't do business with empty shells. Thanks. It's all right. I won't tell you they are. She was a bit full on. Elena is a pussycat compared to Danny. Is he still up to his old tricks, treating the girls like they're his property? You should get out of there. It won't be long before Danny gets one of you lot killed. I swear. If you hate him so much, why do you keep working with him? Because now it's me that's got him under the thumb. Call me sick. I kind of get a kick out of it. Need some help, you know. Bit of collections, deliveries. No. Elena's partner, Carl Jackson, is expecting a delivery tonight. The Meat King. This is my chance to climb the food chain. Abby was going to come along, but she's gone off the radar. I don't know. Um, what's the delivery? Heroin. The delivery's tonight. We've just got to help move it. Simple. I'd do it alone, but they want two girls to courier it to two different locations, and Abby's dropped me in it. Call me when you've had a think about it. Right. Thanks. Mm. Nice one. Look at real danger if you'd have barged in there. Hey, you were told to stay on the street. Well, I can't anticipate how these things are going to pan out, can you I? You have absolutely no idea who the bloke with Elena was. What was I supposed to do? Well, just get a picture of him. Ah, oh, well, that's what you were supposed to do. I got a photo of him. Right, and what about this Carl Jackson? Well, Emma's running his face through the system now. Oh, good. Well, at least someone's doing their job. DS Turner was in a tricky situation. Yeah? Well, so was I. Listen, you can't afford to take risks, all right? I'm not the problem here, Stuart. You are. You shouldn't even be at work. I know it, you know it, everyone knows it, but nobody's got the bottle to tell you. Now, it seems that Danny was telling the truth, and his dealer is Paula Grant, who appears to be working for this woman, Elena Yashina, and her partner, Carl Jackson. And these are the people we think are bringing the high trip in? Yeah, with another delivery due in tonight. Now, Abby Ferguson was supposed to be helping Paula out, and Paula's got no idea that she's dead. She just thinks that she's let her down, which is how I got the in. Right, so she's met you once, and she's agreed to trust you on a drug run? Yeah, well, as far as she's concerned, I'm just another one of Danny's girls, same as Abby. Well, there's obviously a bit of history between Danny and Paula, and she wants to get one over on him. Nick, one of his girls. Yeah, which gives a whole new spin on the fact that Danny gave Paula up in the first place. I mean, Gov, we're stumbling into a whole junky spat here. Sarge. Something not quite right about this, Stevie. I mean, if there is this big delivery coming in tonight, would you trust two junkies as couriers? Well, you know as well as I do that junkies never cross their suppliers. Look, listen, I'd agree with you if this was low level, but this sounds major. Hey, everyone. Meet Carl Jackson. He was done for carousel fraud about three years ago. Did 18 months inside. So what's he up to now? He's got his own business. Jackson's dried meats. Imports from Eastern Europe. Tried and tested way of bringing drugs into the country. Lorries, vans. All we need is a false bottom to bring heroin across the continent. Gov, we've got enough to suggest this is going to be really big. And, and I've got a golden opportunity to be right there when the deal happens. We can't pass up on this. All I need to do is call Paul and I'm in. Gov. Hi, it's me. It's Stevie. Yeah, yeah, just tell me where I've got to be. Right, I'll meet you there. I'm to meet them in an hour and a half. Where? Paul is flat. And I've got to wear something smarter. So she wants to impress Carl, apparently. Right, Kezia, I want you to check the tracking device on Stevie's phone, make sure there's no glitches. And I want you wired up. I'm not going to wear a wire. Well, if anything's going to jeopardise my safety, that will. I'm serious, Gov. All right, but we stay with you every step of the way. Stuart, I want you and Kezia down there and get uniform back up. You're late. 
Is that what you call reliable? That's what I call last minute. I couldn't find a skirt that wasn't a mini. I had to borrow this off a secretary friend of mine. Come on. Well, at least we know the tracker works. Yeah. Some of them look infected. I hope not. That's all I need. You haven't been using dirty needles, have you? No. Of course you haven't. Seen Danny break a girl's arm for that. He makes me laugh. All that rubbish he puts in his system and he gets paranoid about hepatitis and septicemia. Well, it's the HIV, isn't it? Yeah, I know it is, but I can't imagine shoving 200 quid's worth of smack in your arm every day is any good for your immune system. <laughs> as long as it's a clean needle, eh? <laughs> Over. They're approaching Waygate Estate, Gov. In your position. Here they come. Out. This is what you brought me. This is Paula. She wanted to meet you. The other is her friend. Elena tells me you want more responsibility. You're motivated. I like that. Okay. You've seen them. You're content? I suppose so. Ladies. Phones. What? Don't worry, you're getting back. Don't need them where you're going. It's okay. Don't blow this for me, Stevie. Come on, lightly. Let's go down for today, Bruno. We'll be ready to leave in a few minutes. Right. No signal from Stevie. Can't make the approach yet. She's still in the car. Shall I let the DCI know? Yeah. Sierra's good 5 5 from DC Walker. I've met you once, and I've put my trust in you, and I'm just asking you to be straight with me. What is going on here? They're just being careful. Paranoid, more like. They practically abducted us. Just how well do you know Carl? I don't. Don't worry. I know Alina. I owe her. What for? Getting me out. Away from Danny. Give me that flat. New life. New job. Yeah. Dealing heroin. Great. I'd rather be selling heroin than my body. Looks like they're hidden by the way they came. The ball is flat. Maybe that was the pickup. Well, if it was, it wasn't the big haul I was expecting. Thought they'd at least change vehicles. I don't think there's anyone in that car but the driver. Are you sure? Hold on, I'm going to try to get a bit closer. It looks like it's just the driver. It's Elena's muscles, no one else in there. We switched cars, they going on here. Damn! I think we lost Stevie. You could get out too, like Abby was supposed to. You know, after today, we'll be part of the team, yeah? Gov. Stuart, you've made the arrest. We pulled Elena Yoshida's car over. Stevie and Paula's mobiles are here, but there's only the driver and he's saying nothing. We've lost Stevie, Gov. She could be anywhere. What do you mean, you've lost Stevie? Well, they must have swapped vehicles, Gov. You get uniform to bring the driver back to base. We should be one step ahead here, not trying to play catch up. Yes, go. We're here. I've got something in my teeth. Just checking the eyes for giving you this. For later. Cheers. We've got half a truckload over there. I don't know if Elena told you, but I wanted to speak to you about our future working relationship. Relationship? Yeah, uh, 
I want to sit in the front of the van next time, not in the back. Oh, I see. It was just a precaution. Security, it's nothing personal. I know, I just... Trust me. Yeah, I'm sorry, I... What, I'm... I know exactly what you mean. Is there a problem? Not now. You happy? Very. You've done well. Spare me the compliments. Let's get a move on. So where are we taking the stuff? You're not taking it anywhere. She is. And what are we here for? Well, you're here for me. For us. What have you been telling these girls? As little as possible. <laughs> Probably wise. What's going on, Elena? You said we were going to talk business. And we will. But first things first. We've been on the road for eight straight days. A man has his needs. No. No way. What is the problem here? I don't do that anymore. You're a whore, Paula. That's who you are. You're making a fuss over nothing. Well, just calm down, all right? Be OK. It won't. You can't make me do this. I know stuff. I know about you, Elena. <laughs> what did you say? Paula, don't. It's all right, Paula. She needs an ambulance. Log them in a van. Pete, come on, kiss Ed. She's been badly hurt. All right, mate, I can get in there, Stevie, can't be traced. I've got a uniform searching Alina Yashina and Carl Jackson's business premises. OK, Gov, well, we'll feed any information that comes through to Stuart and Kezia, yeah? So we don't know where the switch happened or what vehicle she's travelling in. Alina's heavy is on his way to the station, so we need to encourage him to talk. No. I should have insisted that she wore the wire. She can handle herself, Gov. She'll make contact as and when. Can't even be sure that she's safe. We need to retake control of this situation now. Elena's heavies are proving none too helpful, Stuart. In uniform, I've been through her office with a fine-tooth comb. There's nothing. She has any other property interests other than Paula Grant's flat. However, there was a load of paperwork relating to Carl Jackson's import business. He's got a few commercial premises. Yeah, well, storage units, you mean? Exactly. The most promising so far is Baskmore Buildings, Vance Way. No, I've got that place with Derek for years. It's not ideal for his business, but it's a good place to do a drugs deal. Can you get over there, Stuart, and we'll organise some uniform backup? OK, go. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have... Sorry. Let's not worry about that now. Just concentrate on getting out of here, eh? How can you be so calm? Well, panicking's not going to help us, is it? He's gone. Well, let's just, um... Get you tidied up a bit, eh? People prey on you, don't they? <sighs> the awful thing is... You get used to it. <laughs> Suddenly it's normal. How you expect to get treated? How you deserve to be treated? Well, no one deserves to be treated like that, Paula. <gasps> that happened to you when you were sleeping, Ralph. You're lucky. How old were you when you went on the game? I've never worked as a prostitute, Paula. I'm a police officer. Oh. 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 Gonna be all right then. Well, there was a tracking device, but it was in my phone. Oh. <laughs> At least I'm gonna die in good company. <laughs> You're not gonna die, Paula. Sierra Oscar 5-5 from Sierra Oscar 7. We've got the premises now. Any sign of Stevie? It's clear. Well, the Jackson's vans is here, Gov. Stevie? No, no sign of it yet, Gov. Still searching the premises. It's completely off radar. Without a mobile phone, there's no way of tracing her. She can handle herself, Sarge. Hello! Oh, 
Stop. We found her. She's all right. Right, they've escaped in another Jackson's van. The index numbers. Whiskey Delta 55 Charlie Yankee Yankee. She needs an ambulance. What are you doing? Well, we've got to stop them. Well, you're staying here, mate. No, come you're on. You're staying here, all right? I'm not behind it. Uh, of course you're not. You're just a bit part player, aren't you, mate? No, serious. Your name's written all over the van. Quite the entrepreneur, aren't we? Sorry, please. Haven't you gone home yet? You got the result. Off you go. Uh, Danny Peters. He had five fresh needles on him when you brought him into custody. Well, those are his belongings, so if that's what's there, then yeah. Well, do you think he was high when you arrested him? No. I mean, neither. I reckon he was just about to shoot up when we got there. So? So, can I have a word with him, please? My solicitor tells me that you got the result you wanted. Aren't you happy? Well, you didn't exactly give us the full picture, did you, Danny? <laughs> I've got history with a lot of people. Yeah, but it's interesting that you decided to flag Paula up to us, considering she was going to take Abby away from you. Revenge is something that's really sweet to you, isn't it, Danny? Are you going to run another 50 questions by me now, then? Just one. Did you take any drugs last night before we arrested you? Look, I know that you made a statement saying you were off your face, and I don't really care whether you stick to that or not. This is off the record. <sighs> oh. And you don't reuse needles? That's two questions. But you lied to us about using a dirty needle on DS Tanner, didn't you? Come on, Danny. You've had your fun and games. Don't you think it's time to tell the truth? Would you believe me if I did? Well, I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you if I didn't think you were capable of giving me a straight answer. Your faith in me is very touching, love. I'm kind of done with being patronised by you, love. Three sets of CCTV showing you were in there. Okay. Do what you want, mate. Do the same for you. You come to read me a bedtime story. Oh, I get it. It's round two, isn't it? <laughs> no, you're not worth it. And who are you to judge what I'm worth? Hey? Do you know the difference between me and you? Look. Different set of circumstances here, but you sitting here. I saw that smug look on your face yesterday. You think you're better than me, don't you? Hey? I'll tell you what. I bet you weren't looking so smug last night, were you, eh? I'd have paid good money to see the look on your face then. <laughs> Scared little boy. This isn't about me. It's because of you that I'm stuck in here. No. No, you murdered a 19-year-old girl. Yeah, well. Maybe I've done you a favour and I'll... <laughs> taught you a little bit of... a little bit of humility. No. All you've done is brought my life to a standstill. Three months of waiting and then maybe a life sentence. But you see, you see, what you don't understand is, what you don't, is that I've seen my fair share of suffering. Well, I don't want to interrupt you wallowing or anything. But your mate was right. It was clean.
Well, I believe him. Well, thank you. You didn't have to do that. And um, I'm sorry if I've been obstructive or whatever today. Well, you tried to stop me running headlong into a situation that nearly killed me, so I wouldn't exactly call that obstructive. You know, I think our problem is that maybe we're too similar. That's... You mean, act first, think later. Maybe you're right. What a terrible thought. <laughs> Next time on The Bill. What's your name, sir? Don't remember. Used to be a big man around here. Jacko here is dealing drugs for some scumbag. Andreas Aldra, Bosnian gang leader, suspected of importing drugs into the country. Everybody knows that the Bosnian wasn't the real problem, don't they?